Air and Space USA. Life flourished on Mars in the past. In his new work, published in the International Journal of Astrobiology, Vincenzo Rizzi from the National Research Center in the Italy, Italian city of Cosenza asks a provocative question. Why do many scientists want, do not want to use geological methods to identify biological processes on Mars, while on Earth these methods are widely used? He points to one case that took place in Germany in 1908. Then a scientist named Ernst Kalkowski suggested that multi-layered hummocks, columns, and sheet-like sedimentary rocks called stromatolites are biological in nature. Contemporaries did not believe him, but it was later proven that uh, Kalkowski was right when it became known for what reason stromatolites are formed. And they arise due to the fact that biofilms consisting of cyanobacteria and other microorganisms capture sedimentary deposits. Stromatolites are the oldest evidence of life on Earth since they are at least three and a half billion years old and still exist in some remote regions such as Shark Bay in Australia, he says. In his work, Rizzo follows the footsteps of Kowalkowski analyzing images taken on Mars by the rover Spirit, Aptitude and Curiosity. And these images indicate the presence of biological microstructures such as stromatolites. He believes that unless a different non-biological explanation is found, removed by the Mars rovers should be considered Martian stromatolites. Rizzo demonstrated uh, a large number of structures that are strikingly similar to terrestrial stromatolites here on our Earth. In principle, he said, I'm very doubtful of evidence that is based only on external resemblance or morphology since the human brain tends to find or, or fill with familiar images even where they do not exist. But Rizzo in his analysis is not limited to appearance. He made me realize that if, and this is a big if, stromatolites really exist on an early stage in the life of Mars, then they looked exactly like the samples that we found in the images taken by all-terrain vehicles. And here comes to mind the famous saying of Carl Sagan. Unusual statements require unusual evidence, he says. For such structures that appear as a result of biological processes, there is a certain geochemical or physical process that imitates it. Some of these processes may not be known to us because they occur on other planets such as Mars. On the other hand, we now know more about Mars than in the past. We know that the early stage of the history of this planet, there were lakes and possibly oceans, including the Gale Crater, where he made his photography of uh, the Curiosity rover made photographs. Organic matter was found in that place. And we know that pieces of rock can get from Earth to Mars and vice versa, and also that microbes can survive such a long journey. What then is more unusual is the statement. What on Mars during the early usual usable period were such life forms that were similar to our terrestrial life forms and which produced similar biogenetic structures? Or that Mars has always been and remains a dead planet? One way or another, the bar for applications for the discovery of life on Mars, both in the past and the present, must be very, set very high. Even on Earth, it's sometimes difficult to decide whether a particular structure is a result of biological processes. And now we have more opportunities to explore Mars, but we still cannot and do, uh, do what we do on Earth all the time, go out into the street with a magnifying glass or other device and study this or that mysterious feature. If in the future we conduct an isotopic analysis of the structures discovered by Rizzo, which are similar to stromatolites, we'll be able to obtain new evidence or refutation of their biological origin. Life perhaps uh, prefers lighter isotopes than we can use for verification. But I have suspicions that this hypothesis will face the same fate as Kalkowski's assumption. The final verdict will be issued much later, most likely when Mars will begin to investigate people who arrived there, and I hope they prove him right. And this is on Solask. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.
to support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.